Yo, what's going on, guys? We are here for the second, uh, my second, um, <clears throat> One Piece chapter review and discussion. Uh, 1015 just came out today, and um, a lot of a lot of stuff happened. Um, not, nothing too uh, overly exciting, but we got a lot of information as to how they're going to proceed with the arc. Um, so we're going to get into it here in a second, but before we do, if you enjoy these, please like uh subscribe and comment consider you know helping us out uh gain some traction here and uh let me know what your thoughts are about the chapter and, and such um so let's let's get right into it so first off we have <clears throat> the image of luffy sinking further into the sea and he is you know at least i th i thought he was completely unconscious um and it, it seems that way as the chapter starts so at, we have that quick image and then we jump to a picture of an image of queen um attacking and biting chopper's arm and everybody's kind of starting to freak out and it's becoming a little bit of chaos um chopper <clears throat> and in like disbelief it's almost as if he kind of drops his guard maybe but i mean queen can clearly overpower chopper um, that that was no surprise. I don't think any of us expected that fight to last all that long. Um, but so you know, then we have some of the the beast pirates saying, uh, "Oh, Straw Hat's been beaten," and uh, a bunch of the soldiers starting to kind of uh, freak out and, and lose a little bit of hope and um, asking if Momo's safe. Um, and then we we cut to this uh, this this image of. Uh, Sanji using Zoro, Zoro as a weapon and hitting some frog looking guy um, but they're, they're discussing how you know this is going to hurt morale and um, how they're going to how they're going to continue on so right after that it's you know a pretty short lived moment with them we go right back to Chopper and Queen uh, Queen telling Chopper that he, you know, he was disappointed because he was so fire up, fired up the whole time. <clears throat> and we have Pero Sparrow firing off another volley of candy arrows. So we have this volley of arrows getting shot by Pero Sparrow. And the next panel, you know, we cut to uh, Sanji kicking Queen directly in the face as he's about to go in for another blow on Chopper. You could say potentially the killing blow. Um, breaking a couple of his teeth and really, you know, rocking him, man. He's really rocking his shit here. Um, he does Diambo Jambe and just starts kicking him. He does the uh, rotisserie. His head starts spinning around, which actually deflects a lot of the arrows that Pero Sparrow shoots off. Um, and Sanji kind of has a cool moment. You know, he lights his cigarette, says to Chopper, don't cry, you idiot. We've seen this happen countless times before. Uh, they talk about the miracles that Luffy's been through and that all the all the stuff that they've dealt with. We all know all of that. Um, and then he kind of he just kind of kicks Zoro to to Chopper and basically tells him, "Hey, deal with him because if he does come back, he'll be worth ten men." And Zoro obviously is offended by that and says, "More like two thousand. The interest. I want to kind of hit on this for a minute because. I find it extremely interesting and it I, I I look at it as more of maybe some foreshadowing that we are going to see Zoro fight in some capacity uh at some point in the raid again. Um I I strongly believe that we will see that. Now I don't I personally don't think that Zoro's gonna get like a huge fight with another really big member of the Beast Pirates, such as people thought King potentially. Um and the reason I don't think that he will is because he is significantly hurt. I don't think he would be able to, and, and don't get me wrong, Zoro's one of my favorite characters, but I don't think he would be able to stand with a king at, or any other any other pirate of that caliber in the state that he's in. But I think we will see him maybe, you know, cleaning up some cannon fodder and such you know later on maybe pulling out a big move to wipe out a few hundred guys that were that are remaining and charging our our remaining forces here so then you know we have uh marco telling us you know that's why he's always liked the straw hats because they never give up and they never you know 
crack under the pressure and they you know they just they're a really hard-headed group and he's always admired them um and then we get into the a little bit of the dark stuff here um we cut to images of Kanjiro, kiku um and then a silhouette in that next panel of kaido and you know Kanjiro and kiku are down they're unconscious they're not doing so hot um and obviously i i still don't think that they're dead right now but then we go to keen here and sorry about my dog crying he's being a baby because i'm not giving him attention uh we go to keen he's holding up his broken sword and we have kaido kind of glaring at him and and keen trying to stab kaido again um at least that's what I think this this really small panel is, um, because it's it's kind of muddy. I'll be honest; it is a little bit muddy, but um, it kind of you know coughs, gets up, and then we cut to some flashbacks of of him and uh, Momo and a little bit of the group involved. Basically, you know them building their relationship in a very very short manner shows us kind of them building a relationship and him having to call him father and him literally taking on the role of his father so I, I thought it was a a little bit touching um and it that little flashback is pretty short-lived and we jump straight to kaido with uh i believe kinemon's other sword and oh man i said it last time i said it last week when i was reviewing 1014 that i think it would be very impactful for keen to die and I'm just going to say, I don't think he's dead right this second, but he is done. Like, I, he is not coming back. Just how I think Kiku and Kanjiro are not coming back. I think Keen is fucked. I think he is not getting up. I think he is maybe going to speak a couple words to Momo right at the end of the raid, maybe. And then he's just, he's gone. And, and obviously, I could be wrong. Next week, we could see that he is completely, you know, done. He might completely be dead. Um, but we have Kaido telling him to embrace your honorable death like a true samurai, which is very like Kaido, but also um, it's, it's, I feel like it's almost a little bit of a compliment because he is saying that it, he died honorably. And I think that's interesting. And that's just, I think that's a little bit more of Kaido coming out and, and telling us a little bit more about his character in a very vague way. But I'm, that's how I'm perceiving it is that he, in a very loose sense, respected Kinemon, especially as his drive and determination. Um, and then we, we obviously, we cut to Momo and Momo has one of the, uh, frog, um, tell, uh, transponder things you know like the pa system basically uh for onigashima and he tells everybody that luffy says he's alive and so that's why i was hinting at in the beginning apparently luffy wasn't unconscious um at least in some capacity he was telling momo that he was alive and now we know in the previous chapter who momo was speaking to or seeing through and he tells us, you know, he'll definitely make it. He'll definitely still beat Kaido. And basically this kind of, like just in one chapter, this turns the tide from, oh, we're fucked <laughs> straight to, we got hope still. Luffy is not dead. We, we have hope and we can still do this. Um, at least in some capacity of all of the, the strong fighters. I mean, they don't show a ton of the extras. But I feel like their spirits are also rejuvenated. And we get another answer right away. I thought we were going to have to wait dozens, uh, like at least a dozen chapters to see how Luffy got out of this. But we, we haven't seen it, but it's telling us that uh, we see Law's crew is down there in the submarine. And they just randomly stumble upon Luffy. Very, very one piece about that. Very one piece about that. How someone's there at the right time. And uh, I... Will be honest, I completely forgot that Law's crew was not on Onigashima. Um, I'll have to look back at it. I'm not going to fact check myself right now. But I do believe there was a hint that Law told them to stay at the shore and not come on. But it completely slipped my mind that they didn't come with them. 
um so yeah obviously then we have you know everybody like uh being a little bit surprised and we jump into even more shocking information uh nami's is climax talking to her um i i think that this is zeus uh, i mean i'm not positive but maybe zeus can possess other objects and take on other things or maybe he's inside of it and um he didn't actually get completely devoured i'm interested to see what that will turn into and speaking of you know one of mama's weapons we go to mama and kid uh getting ready to clash and then trafalgar law kind of just popping in and basically telling kid that he's gonna help him fight and he also he also says that uh he's he basically says never say never with luffy and he's learned that over the over his journey with them so it's also really nice to see that law has still has a a large amount of confidence in luffy and in the raid obviously if he's like fuck it i'm gonna go fight mama now with kid i'm gonna go help him and then lastly we jump to there's a lot that happened in this chapter lastly we jump to uh kaido standing there and yamato up higher and um yelling down and basically he says don't you mean father um and she says uh that bond has been has chained me for too long i'm here to free myself so i think we're about to see some yamato on yamato v kaido action here and uh i think it's gonna be great i think that's gonna i think she is going to fill the time until luffy gets back and it's great because we're actually going to see what yamato's made of and i i don't have high hopes for her you know i don't think she's gonna necessarily stand her ground firm against kaido but i think she'll be able to buy some time so that kaido can't just go on a murderous rampage killing all of the other scabbards or going to mama and just obliterating kid and and law so i i know this this chapter was a little bit jumbled around i mean there was so much happening like literally each page had so much shit going on in it and it was really good um i think that uh this pace might keep up for a little while until we get into sanji's fight with queen um i think i don't think it's really gonna die or i don't think we're gonna dive into that all that much in the next chapter or two i think it'll kind of you know be like hold the how the jimby thing jimbe thing was happening where we'd get like a single panel here and there um but obviously we are going to get a fight with sanji and queen at least i hope i really hope that wasn't just like a a little oh you thought but uh one piece never ceases to amaze me so and um i'll hit one last little thing before we go here the they did a color spread of the last two pages and it is beautiful it looks awesome we get to see the kick from sanji uh hitting queen him spinning and deflecting all the arrows we get to see uh chopper crying and we get to see Eustace and Law interacting a little bit. And then obviously the very last uh, bit, we get to see Kaido glaring at Yamato and Yamato yelling down at him. So I hate having to wait to read these chapters one or two weeks at a time. Sometimes they do the bye week. Obviously this week they, they came out with one. Oh, <sighs> man. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, hopefully, you know... You go you went and read the chapter read the chapter not read read the chapter before you watch the video but if not you know hopefully this was informative and thanks for watching like i said if you'd like please like subscribe comment all that jazz and if you enjoy this content feel free to check out my podcast that me and two of my friends do every sunday on twitch at the chaotic nerds with a z um and we're on twitter instagram facebook obviously here and on twitch so uh yeah thanks guys and uh, i'll see you later peace